Hello, it's Philippa Waller from 4D Human Being and welcome to video number two in our series of coping in a curveball. And today we are talking about connection. Now most of us have a pretty good idea how important connection is for human beings, even in the best of times. And of course, when things get tough, connection becomes crucial. So there's lots of research and scientific studies out there telling us that when even as a baby or then growing into adulthood, if we haven't had connection, then as a child, literally part of our brain becomes underdeveloped. Like we need connection as human beings. We are born in relationship and we are always in relationship. So it's really, really important that we stay really conscious of this at a time when we are being asked to self-isolate. Now, for my own history and my own personal tragedy from a few years ago when my former partner took his own life and I started looking at what leads people to the level of depression and anxiety that they actually don't even want to be around anymore. And the two key things that lead people to really ending up in a place of despair is belonging and burdensomeness. So what do we mean by that? We mean that people feel like they don't belong and people feel like they're a burden. And these feel really, really critical at the moment, whether it's at home with your neighbours, or whether it's at work with your colleagues. It's really important that we help people have a sense of belonging, particularly those who maybe are more anxious or feel more isolated. So we know that even in the best of times at work, there's something like a 15% level of engagement in organisations. So anyway, we need to get better at connecting and now feels like a really, really good opportunity to do it. So we're going to look at kind of four aspects here. We're going to look at me. That doesn't mean me. That means I, the individual. We're going to look at methods of connection. So how we can kind of think differently about how we connect when we can't see each other in person. We're going to look at how meaningful connection is and why it's important to reach out. And we're going to look at moving beyond our kind of close network. What else might we be able to do? So thinking about me, first of all, or rather you, if we think about connection, we often think about other people. And there's something else really important here, which is about connection to self. And really simply, and really briefly, that is about taking a moment each day to check in and ask yourself, are you okay? You know, particularly for those of us who just crack on, you know, get on, keep going, actually take a moment to treat yourself like we're about to talk about, you might treat other people. Just check in, what do you need? Do you need a bit of space? Do you need a bit of reassurance? So self-connection is key or else we'll all burn out and none of us will be any use to anybody. So the second thing is method. So obviously now we can't go down the pub or to a coffee shop or meet in a park too often, certainly not uh, at any proximity. We have to keep our distance. So methods of connection. And lots of people are now picking up on Zoom and WebEx and um, conferencing technology to be able to video each other. There's brilliant things going on. Today I got a little post through a WhatsApp group about a pub quiz that's gone completely insane. A guy did it just for like a local group and now nearly half a million people have signed up for it. So there's some really, really fun examples of how people are trying to create connections. So we don't just have to email, we can WhatsApp, we can text, of course, we can create new groups, we can send little videos, we can send audio recordings and we can set up um, Zoom accounts or WebEx accounts and have online video socials. I actually sat down the other day and hand wrote a letter to somebody about a five page letter. And there was something really satisfying about that. I'm from an era where we did still just about write letters when I was a teenager. So it definitely took me back. But actually more importantly, it really made me think about how much more creativity we can give to the way that we connect with each other, that we can think slightly differently about it. And actually sitting down and writing a handwritten letter really, really gave me the space to think about that other person and really be connected to them. And I also imagine when they pick that up, 
off of the doormat and open it up, that will have a very, very particular and special meaning to them. I hope it does. So methods of connection, think outside the box. Now, number three, we're talking about how meaningful connection can be. Now, we work with a lot of organizations and a lot of leaders, and we hear from individuals within organizations that when they get like a 20 second email that's taken just a really short time to write from one of their leaders, it's incredibly meaningful. So that might have taken you as a leader just a few seconds, but to the person you've sent it to, that motivation, that connection might stay with them for a day, a couple of days, a week, a month, who knows. So there's something about who can you really connect with that's going to be really meaningful for them. So that might be on a professional level, that might be somebody who works with you or for you. But equally, you know, it can be lonely at the top of organisations. Maybe think about dropping your boss a line checking in with them because often I think we expect the care to sort of trickle down and if you've got a moment where you're feeling okay maybe trickle some of that back up trickle the connection back up and the other thing of course is at home how can we find fun ways to connect at home particularly with many of us trying to fulfill kind of multiple roles at home you know there's a lot being talked about now about parents trying to be kind of breadwinners and earners they're trying to be sort of parents and run a family and they're also now being asked to be teachers so there's a lot being demanded of us and in a way that looks like there's lots of connection but it's really thinking about the kind of connection that we're having. So how can we take a moment to really be with a member of our family? How can we think about different ways to be connected? Can we leave post-it notes around the house or, um, I don't know, set up kind of speakers between rooms and uh, have kind of audio messages going around? How can we think differently and creatively about how we get connected at this time? And the third thing, Sorry, the fourth thing to talk about is moving beyond our kind of usual network. So I like to think about three concentric circles and in the middle one is the word obvious. So this is the three O's of connection. So in the middle circle is obvious and those are your obvious connections. The people that you're living with now in isolation every day, the people that you're kind of waking up with, breakfasting with, lunching with, working with. And then there might be within that as well, your very close family members that you're Skyping or WebExing or Zooming or calling. Then in the next circle, the next O might be others. So beyond that, it might be perhaps work colleagues that you don't necessarily spend as much time with. So I'd put your regular work colleagues there in the middle if you're spending a lot of time every day talking to them or certainly communicating with them in some way. So in the second one, we've got others. So people that maybe you don't see as much, maybe kind of family members that are that bit removed, maybe friends that you don't regularly see, but they're kind of in your network. So others in that second circle, who could you contact there? And then finally, the, th the third O would be outliers. And these are people that maybe you ha really haven't been connected with for a long time. They might be people that are kind of right at the edge of your network or friends of friends or friends of your parents. So the other day I sent some photos and an email to a friend of my mother's. She's 90 years old, she's called Betty, and she lives on her own. So she's very much isolated at the moment. And I know how much she loves getting photos and getting emails. So I don't see her very often, but I know that that's really meaningful for her. And that took me like a minute to do. And I also told my sisters to do the same as well. So who are those people? out there, the outliers, that actually would really, really, really like to get some communication from you um, and perhaps the unexpected communication. So think about those three O's. There'll be people that you're connecting with maybe quite regularly, but who is there in the next circle out that would really appreciate hearing from you or maybe a call or maybe it would be nice to really to, to catch up. And then finally, the outliers. Just start thinking about who might be out there on their own that I can really connect with. 
So there's amazing things happening out there at the moment in terms of connection. You know, we heard yesterday that there's nearly half a million people have signed up to volunteer for the NHS to help people. And what I'm saying here today as well is that you can do one, two things every day that really do a similar thing, that make people feel like they count, that make people feel like they belong, that definitely make people feel like they're not a burden, but actually there's somebody that you want to connect with. And we can all, all do that every day. So whether it's personal or professional, whether it's in your family, connection leads to well-being, which leads to happiness, certainly more happiness. And professionally, you know, that we know that more connection leads to more productivity because people are much more engaged so whether you're thinking about home or work there are so many benefits to really thinking about staying connected i wish you well take care stay safe and stay connected and we'll be making another video soon thank you